Dang! Rich! Oh, you still put your mic on. I, oh, well, and I'm gonna hide my cord here. Because you know, we can't have them see our mic cords. How embarrassing would that be? Yeah, they know we use them. They know we use microphones? Yeah. Well, I hope so. Horizon Zero Dawn is one of the dumbest names. But it's like you can't call it Horizon because I think there's a racing game called Horizon. Yeah. So you can't call it Horizon. And could you and you can't really call it Zero Dawn because that makes it almost sound like a military thing. Yeah, you, there's a ton there's eight billion better names you can come up with. Yeah. Iron Claw. Iron Claw, that's a great one. The a Metal Age. Yeah, oh, how about Metal Dawn? If, metal if, Dawn. There if you they're, go. If they're there happy, if they want the Dawn thing, Metal Dawn. Hunter's Gear. Rise of Man. You know, just like, <laughs> like, like you know, Mankind's Rebirth. Something like, something. Any name is better than Horizon Zero Dawn. We yeah. can all agree on yeah. that. Yeah. You know why? You can't remember it, and it has nothing to do with fighting robot dinosaurs. So Rich, yes. What is Horizon Zero Dawn? It, it is the new open world science fiction post-apocalypse Native American robot dinosaur hunting game by Gorilla something or other studios. Gorilla Games. Gorilla yeah. Games by Gorilla Games, Jack. Yeah. What you got here is an open world in which your main tools for fighting are a staff that could essentially be a sword, a bow and arrow, and a slew of weapons that you can pick up to help you take down giant beasts. And one of the things I really like, love, about Zero Horizons Dawn yep. is uh, the approaches to taking down these giant metal beasts. It's, it's very tactical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's like you know you could you could scan them and there's not one solution but right. like you know okay you got the, the the beast it's it's got like the canisters on the back and the, you, you get light those on fire and it'll blow up but mm -hmm. then also be like if you can rip the the face mask off there's a weak spot under there and mm -hmm. you can just a regular arrow to tear that off oh and yeah there's different ways to do it mm -hmm. combat in Horizon Zero Dawn I'm going to categorize as sloppy but satisfying why would you say sloppy. Because I found myself kind of rushed and hacking my way through uh, human-sized enemies and smaller robots. Sure. Well, human enemies kind of suck. Human enemies suck. Smaller robots after you power up kind of suck. Satisfying in that even for those human ed enemies, it felt good. Smacking them with my staff felt really good. And satisfying because any, any bigger beast fight is fucking phenomenal. Well, that's the selling point, though. It's the bigger beast fights. Right. Cause, you know, you, you, get, you have all these different weapons. You have, a, like, a, a rope gun, so you can tie them down so they can't charge you. You can set up... Well, you, uh, can, you can set up ahead of time. It's, like, the neat thing. Like, you yeah. see that big thing, you know, in the background. You know, there's, like, uh, 20 feet off there, there's, like, a valley. Oh, I'll, I'll use my little tr rope trip rope gun. Mm -hmm. I'll put an electrified trip rope there. And then I'll set off some kind of like explosive thing behind him, and that'll that'll charge from that way. He'll probably go through the valley. He'll he'll hit my shock wire. He'll be frozen, and then mm -hmm. I'll go in and I'll hit the vital components with my arrow. <laughs> it That's neat. Phenomenal. There there <laughs> there's a lot of really good comparisons. Like you said, planning out your attacks ahead of time and the openness that you can attack uh, compounds or giant beasts. Very Metal Gear Solid Five. Mm -hmm. Mm. Loved that. Just roaming around and fi stumbling upon giant beasts. Very, um, what was that? Uh, Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma. I loved that. Just walking around and shit, there's a there's big a, robot. There's a boss fight in the middle of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of, a lot of favorable comparisons. To What 
one of the neat things about combat is instant crafting. As you're going fighting these giant bosses, eventually you'll run out of arrows. And it, they, they actually have this kind of like active crafting where uh, time slows down when you pick what arrow you're using and you can craft on the spot to get more uh, to get more arrows. And I, I thought that I felt very fluid during the big fights. Like, shit, I'm running out of arrows. Craft, craft, to dodge, dodge. I liked it. Yes, but f just from the point of view of crafting, yeah. I thought the whole point was to feel like you're, you're building this stuff out of scratch. It just, it just felt like open the menu and press the button to get more arrows. <laughs> you... You 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 never you're never gonna run out of fucking supplies for shit. There's crafting material, f fucking everywhere. It yeah. feels like you could pick up like an endless amount. I never even really upgraded my, my satchels that much. Oh, so and yeah. I I had materials just falling out of my ass. Well, that's why I have to upgrade your satchels so they don't fall out of your ass. Uh, <laughs> no, you'll you'll never run out of arrows, yeah. never ever. But you will run out of health potions, and you will run out of. Uh, of certain things that you that make the combat fun, okay. especially health. You know, like you you have your your little medical pouch, and then you have health potions, and you can craft health potions. But in order to get all of the materials to craft health potions, you also need to kill animals, mm -hmm. and animals are harder to come by, and you don't get that much materials from them. So health management is a is a big concern. You just gotta remember to keep killing those animals, Jack. Right. I know you like the cute little fox. You saw Zootopia. You like the cute little fox and the bunny. You got to kill that shit with a fucking flaming arrow. Do you want to do flaming arrow, though? I, uh, you better safe than sorry. Damn you all. Too many of them! The, the way in which you select your weapons, the, the way in which you can insta-craft things, combat felt fluid and intense for those big boss battles. Everything feels rushed and a little sloppy, but I, I say that as a compliment. It never feels like I'm exiting the game. It feels frantic, but a good frantic, I guess. You, you say it feels sloppy. I'll say when it, when it comes to your larger metal monster boss fights, yeah. very much not sloppy very very tactical and how you want to approach it no. when it comes to all of the smaller enemies they did not think it through at all that is extremely <laughs> sloppy whatever you like the bandit camp is the dullest fucking shit my, my other major complaint and this oh, is no. this is gonna largely just be me this is only gonna affect like a handful of people out there uh -huh. but if you're like me and you basically grew up with pc gaming and if you think the only way to fucking aim at a game is with a mouse uh -huh. and anything else is just frustrating un and unsatisfactory, yeah. uh, this game constantly wants you to aim at like tiny little weak points. And trying to do that with an analog stick, for me, somebody who is largely a PC gamer, is the most frustrating thing in the world. Made me want to tear my hair out. Sure. Sure. This game is so screaming to be used with a fucking mouse. But it, unfortunately, it's a PlayStation exclusive. So you gotta, you're stuck with your, your goofy little game pad. Yeah, this looks so much they like rear up for like one second to give you a shot at the underbelly. And right. you're trying to do that with a fucking thumbstick. I hate it. It's awful. Well, and they, they did, they found a way to kind of temper that where you do have your your slow motion vision that you can use. Nowhere near slow enough. Everything in this game, most of the, most everything in this game moves fast. Which, all, all that says to me is it's an appropriate challenge. Like, it, it was never a find the pattern. Yeah. Well, you know, to, to use Zelda as an example, big Zelda bosses always have the big glowing thing that hurts them. Yeah. But they also usually have a pattern. Wait till it turns left, turns right, jumps up, then you can hit the glowing thing. So all you're doing is waiting for the pattern. The, this enemy AI was erratic and all over the place, so it was a really wait for your moment. You never know when the moment's going to come. And yeah, that yeah. made the combat feel very satisfying. Okay. Okay. So. I would just would have preferred to actually hit the weak spots, <laughs> like with a mouse. <laughs> like if you could aim more accurately with <laughs> yeah, a mouse. Would, yeah, yeah, well, The, 
There's something I want to say about side missions. Overall, the world in general is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And all of the side missions really help build the lore of this post-apocalyptic world. It's, it's a very fully realized world. They're, they're very, like, meaty side missions, more so than you talk to somebody, you gotta collect the, the things. Cl go collect the, this ten things mm. out, out in that area, the, the valley. Yeah. You find them and bring them back. They're usually a bit more involved than that. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, it's really nice from a world-building perspective. Uh, the downside to the side missions is you have three to choose from. Clear out the red corrupted robots. Mm -hmm. You have go to the techno cave to find an upgrade for your staff. Or you have follow the glowing pink breadcrumbs. Yes. But like a lot of NPC dialogue and interaction and world building going with it though. And, and that's a good part, but for the glowing pink breadcrumbs, I, I know. It's, it's literally follow the line to the next thing I, I and then follow the line to the next thing. There is no thought involved with it. It's, it got very repetitive for me, and I, I did a ton of the side missions because I really just enjoyed going to the snowy mountains, going to the desert, going to the rainforest. I loved just walking around the map. It was great. It's a beautiful world. Goddamn beautiful world. Vistas everywhere. Ready? Vista montage. Go! I guess we can go to kind of like story, main char character's story. Yeah, yeah. Now. So you play as Aloy. You play as did you? Did you not groan when you heard her fucking name? I, Isn't that a little bit too on the nose? In the metal world, you're Aloy. I get it. I'm, sho I'm shocked her, her adopted father wasn't called like smelting... I am Geartron. <laughs> the High Matriarch, Stiel. <laughs> Kopar. Kopar, where have you been? Titanium. Teb is my name. You were half my size when you saved me from a herd of machines. So you play as Aloy, a baby of mysterious background who gets adopted by the town outcast. And in a surprise move that literally everyone saw coming from the moment they started playing the game, your father figure dies. <laughs> and, and your mysterious origins lead to some kind of gigantic mystery right. that needs to be resolved. The, the story is very front-loaded. I was really worried about this game because a lot, like the first two, three hours is so dense with story and cutscenes and dialogue trees. I was, my eyes were glazing yeah, over. It's not that bad. My eyes were glazing I, over. You, I like the dialogue trees. They, the dialogue trees, they let you express yourself within the game. Like you get that one moment where the kid throws a rock at you. Yeah. And then you get the option, they're like three choices. Like, you know, you could throw it back or just let him get away with it. And I forgot what the third option was, but mm. And they, they give you they it gives you a voice within the story that otherwise yeah. you would have no control over and that's sure. that's a nice thing and, it's always enjoyable and, and other dialogue trees do it, it gives you the option of whether or not you want to learn more about a character or just rush or through. Yeah. you know skip that I don't care what's the quest here's here's where I get to my compliment it's front loaded with with story and cutscenes yeah I don't like that but once your actual quest gets going yeah. The story is doled out really nicely, mostly just through the world. And your personal quest is very simple. And I say that as a compliment. Yeah. Where... Where, where did I come from? Where did I come from? But that's, that's like a tenth of what this game is. The rest of the game is just building on this amazing world. It's, it's a neat science fiction premise mm -hmm. where it, some mysterious thing happened... 
and humanity was was nearly wiped out. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing left but like a handful of survivors and some machines that are all over the place. And humanity through the ages, after losing civilization, they're starting to redevelop, but they're they're very much back to their roots. It's a tribal society again, mm. but it's it's a tribal society that also has like machines that are still around that has made its way into their <laughs> mythology. Like their creation myths involve <laughs> robots, right? <laughs> It's fantastic. It's There's, fantastic. There is mention of a robot devil in this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a neat science fiction universe. Uh-huh. Uh, you can tell that they put a lot of thought into the backstory and into the world. It, well, one, of the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the words I use to describe this game is polish. Everything, everything in this fucking game feels polished. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like... Not not just the thought they put into the backstory, because, like, fuck it, any game could just have a book of the backstory. The way in which they dole out that information, it's very rarely shoved in your face. Mm-hmm. It's all just shit you stumble across. <laughs> you meet other tribes, and these other tribes have detailed back histories that are all part of side quests. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, like, this side quest is, we were at war with them, but now we're not. But these people want to raise trouble. And, oh, oh okay, so you kind of get into the world. They are they're at a war because one tribe wanted to appease the robots with human sacrifices. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And then no, it's, it's a great world. And then it's fucking Game of Thrones in that little area, and it's great. This is a game. No, this is a game that would actually make a good TV show, like Game of Thrones. <laughs> yes, yes. If not a movie. Does mm-hmm. it actually work for that? No, amazing world. And so I guess that, like, for me, that's the thing about the story is your character, Aloy, th- there's actually, like, her her simple quest is very simple and straightforward. Like, ah, I just got to go here and find out a thing. Yeah. It's the rest of the world that's amazing. And I love it that they made her so simple. Like, she still has a drive. Yeah. You understand what her goal is. But none of that matters because the world's so beautiful. No, in a, in a game, I think you want your protagonist to be easy to identify with. Right. And you know, like having that simple quest, that that helps that she doesn't have a convoluted backstory. The great chamber where all mother slew the metal devil and gave birth to you. This is where we found you. We heard your cries, came to look, and there you were. Just... just lying there? Yes. You mean I came from behind the door? Always, that is what I have believed. That you came from the womb of the mountain. But... this isn't a goddess. Aloy! It's a door. Just as I'm taking time to praise the story. One of my biggest pet peeves, not only in games, the, uh, this is also a movie thing. There, there's a saying in movies, show, don't tell. Yeah. And uh, this game is fucking full of tell and also show. <laughs> Aloy has voiceover over goddamn everything, and it's very rarely necessary. Like, her voice actress is good. I, I enjoyed her. Like, everything yeah. was fine. But she is constantly talking. Uh, one of the side quests, we were hunting someone's crazy brother or something. Uh, we come to a boar head at a monument. Like, I didn't find the boar head. I reached the area in which she delivered the voice line that says, What is that boar head doing here? And I wasn't even looking at the boar head. So, fi- so I had to, like, turn it. What boar head? What are you talking about? Aloy, where's it? Oh, there's the boar head. Oh, yeah, that's weird. And that's the problem with tell, don't show in games is sometimes the voice line will trigger before you as the player have the opportunity to see it. How do you do do that as a just show? What if you don't pay much attention to the boar head? You've seen boars all throughout the game. Mm -hmm. What if you don't pay much attention to it? Then you need to step up your art direction and make the boar head something that the player wants to look at. Okay, in, okay. Instead of instead of making uh, it a a boar head on a tiny pedestal that the pa- that the character can ignore, you make a giant fucking blood monument that the character has to look at. Maybe at you, the end of a corridor. You have very specific ideas on how storytelling has to be done yes, in the game. Yes, has to be. You you are uncompromising and unbending on it. 
Like, this is like she said a thing. Yeah. All right. It, well, like, water off my back, Jack. Well, well, see, Rich, that like that was one example that I know I have gameplay footage of. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was one example of something that I kept running into over and over, of, of voice lines triggering when I wasn't necessarily looking at what it was triggering. So then I had to spend time and stop playing the game to figure out what the hell she was talking about. <laughs> this strider is fast! <laughs> this beats walking. Uh, so, so, Rich. Yeah? Would you recommend Horizon Zero Dawn? Yes and no. Mostly yes. Uh, it's like 99% yes. 1% no. So, so yes is what you're saying. Yeah, if, if you are, like I said, if you're like me, if you're mm. a PC guy who just fucking needs anything where you have, like, precision aiming, it needs to be a fucking mouse. Yeah. Or it detracts from the experience. Mm. Analog aiming detracts from the experience for me, and you're doing a lot of it. From that sense, I, I almost want to say if you're that kind of person, yeah. maybe hopefully there'll be a PC release down the line. Otherwise... Fantastic polished game. It's one detail. Yeah. But for me personally, it's a very big detail. Hmm. Hmm. But I will freely say that otherwise it is a great fucking game, and 99% of the people watching this don't have the same, oh god, gamepads for aiming, I hate that, that I do. Sure. So they would love it. Okay. No, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I, I fully recommend this. I, the, it's, 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 I, I had a ton of fun playing. Great world, great fight. The, the giant, the, it, worth it alone for the giant robo dinosaur fights. I'm interested to see what happens. It's one of the few games that I am going to play more. Usually, you know, we, we play a game for the show, and it's like, okay, yeah, I played that game, I'm done now. But this game, I, I think I'm actually going to see to the end. I'm, I'm interested. Hopefully, there'll be a PC release. Then I will see it through to the end. You won't if there's no PC release. Then, then I'll never play it through to the end. I need that aim. I need it. Wow.